got another puzzle for puzzle. In this video, we're going to be exploring how many combinations or permutations are on the Megaminx and Pyraminx. Now, before you watch this video, I really recommend watching this video where I go over the combinations of like 2x2 two two and 3x3. Three three, because if you don't know a bunch of those concepts, then you might not be able to understand this video. So, let's start off with the Pyraminx. Now, a lot of you may not know how a Pyraminx works, and let me just go through that. There are basically three types of pieces. One, we have the tips, as you can see, they're just on the outside, and there are four of them. One, two, three, four. Then we have the center pieces, that's basically this piece, they're basically right next to the tip, and these three, these are like connected to each other, so if you like turn this, they stay towards each other, and they basically act like that. And there are also four of them attached to the tips. And finally, we have the edges. There are six of them, and they're basically the other pieces. So these ones. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. Now, the easiest part to work out will be the tips, because they don't move at all. Now, as you can clearly see, we have one, two, three, four tips. And there are three ways that they can be oriented. They can be solved, or this this so that's three ways the tips can be oriented and there are four of them so what we have to do is three times three times three times three and that is three to the power of four so those are the tips now let's work out how many ways can the centers be oriented and let me tell you they're exactly the same why because these centers they basically move along with the tips but the tips can move on their own they basically move in the same way as the tips. Now, I know some of you might be thinking maybe some special orientation of the centers will affect some parity on the edges or something, but watch this. I've just rotated the center on its own, and if I fix the tip real quick, as you can see, the, only the center has just been moved, nothing else. So you know what that means? We can do the same thing. There are basically four center pieces and three ways they can be, uh, I guess, permuted. So that's again three to the power of four. Now, lastly, we have the edges. These are more complicated, but shouldn't be too hard. So, of course, there are six of them. Now, if you remember from the three by three, now I'm not going to explain it again. Again, you should probably watch that video. Is basically there are six factorial ways to arrange the edges and that's basically six times five times four times three times two times one so that's the amount of ways that they can be permuted but in terms of orienting them well as you may know from three by three well basically these edges they can flip so they've got two ways to be oriented so if you just take into account there are, there are six edges, then that means two times two times two times two, times two, or that's two to the power of six. Got me? But just like the three by three, we've got to remember that there are parity situations. So the first one is permuting the edges. Now, just like three by three, you cannot swap two edges just on their own. You have to do three cycles. So that basically means we can chop out half of the cases and we can divide the whole thing by two. Why is that? Because when you place four of the edges, let's say we've placed this one, this one, this one, and this one, these two, they have to be in the correct spot. If they were swapped, then that will be an impossible case. That's the kind of short reason why. So we have to divide by two. But we're not done yet because you have to remember that only two edges can be flipped, or any two edges can be flipped, and you can't just have a single edge being flipped because that's impossible. So we also have to divide by two because if we've flipped all the edges and we just get to this last one, it has to be the right way. Basically, these five have chosen what this edge has to be like. So I've got my calculator here, so let's type it out. So for the tips, there's three to the power of four. And for the centers, there's also 3 to the power of 4. Then for the edges, there are 6 factorial ways. Oh my goodness, I keep forgetting to add a multiplication sign. But 6 factorial ways to permute them. 
and two ways, uh, sorry, two to the power of six ways to orient them. But you've got to remember the parity situations. So because you can't have just two edges being swapped, you have to divide by two. And because you can't just have one edge being flipped, you also have to divide by two again. So that's the full calculation. And we can hit enter and we get 75 million. 582,720, and this is the right answer. Or is it? If you've ever solved pyramids before, you know that the tips, they really don't do anything. They kind of just add to the scrambled look. So people say that scrambling the tips, just it really doesn't add anything. So for that reason, we can just divide by the amount of ways to arrange the, sorry, permute the tips. So that means we can just divide that by 3 to the power of 4 because there's a lot of ways that the tips could be arranged. And we get 933,120. So that's just under a million. But if you do think the tips make the pyramids more scrambled, then you can go with the 75 million figure. So here's the Mega Minx. This is more important that you know 3 by 3 because Mega Minx is really similar to 3 by 3. It's just a lot bigger. So there are basically two types. Well, there's three, but two main types. There's the edge pieces, obviously. We've got two colors on each of them. And around the Mega Minx, there are 30 of them. And the corners, these ones have, well, yeah, these have three colors on them. And there are 20 of them around the Mega Minx. Now, because this is really similar to a 3x3, three three, we can just borrow a bunch of techniques that we've already pretty much got from the 3x3. Three three. So, what does that mean? We'll just put a calculator so we can, so we don't remember it. So let's work out the edges first. So, there are 30 edges, which means there are 30 factorial ways to permute them. And uh, we're going to multiply that by... So there's obviously two ways to orient the edges. You can go flip this or just flip like that. So that means we have 2 to the power of 30. And now we have, we're have we going to work out the corners. So there are 20 of them, and there are 20 ways that they can be uh, swapped around. So that means we multiply this by 20 factorial for the corners. And for the amount of ways they can be twisted, well, there's 20 corners, and there's three ways you can twist each of them. So that means we have 3 to the power 20. So as you might expect, we can't just flip a single edge. We have to flip two of them. So uh, I don't know an algorithm for this, but just trust me that this is how it works. So we're going to divide that by two. And as you might also expect, we can't just twist a single corner. We have to twist uh, basically the corners. There are 20, there are, sorry, the 19 corners and that decides what the last one should be. So, because there are three ways that this could be, but two of them aren't one of them's right, we have to divide by three. So that's orientations out of the way. Now for permutations, it's actually, 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 probably a lot more straightforward. Because you may know from three by three that you can do one swap of corners and one swap of edges. But you can't do them independently, so you can't just have two edges swapping or two corner swapping. But the thing is, on Mega Minx, that is impossible. You can't just have two edges and two corner swapping. And even if I took all the corners off, you cannot swap just two edges. If I took all the corners, if I, sorry, if I took all the edges off, you can't swap two corners. Now, this is due to the fact that when you turn a Mega Minx, you're doing four swaps, which is even parity, so you cannot get an odd number of swaps whatsoever. So that means when we take all the 30 edges, and we, so we're at 27 now, and when we put this blue one here, it decides what these two have to be, whether it's like this or this. So you might be thinking that it might be the same as the 3x3, three three, but it applies to the edges and the corners. So that means since we have like a double swap, since basically everything decides the last two, we can divide it by two because there are two ways to do this. This and this, and for the edges, it's this and this. So we divide by two for the corners and two for the edges. 
So that's the full calculation. I'm not sure if you can see that, but we're going to hit enter. And we get a pretty ridiculous number, but it is just a bit over 10 to the 68, which is a ridiculous number. Did you figure this out? Let me know in the comments below. And tell me if you found this video interesting. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.